Okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome to another uh, Jazz Matters podcast. Today we're here with the great Levi Barku, uh, pianist, band leader, composer, arranger, everything under the sun type of person. And uh, just to get started, man, um, I basically want to say, um, let us know, you know, a little more about you, where you're from, and how you got started in the business. Um, all right. Uh, you know, I, I'm from New York, Levi Borku. I'm from New York, Brooklyn. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I was born in South Carolina. And when I was uh, three, probably three or four years old, my parents moved to uh, New York and always been a New Yorker. You know, went to school there, uh, went to the famed High School of Music and Art, um, where I was there with uh, uh, Omar Hakim and Marcus Miller. They were, um, Omar Hakim was in my same grade, we graduated at the same time. Marcus was a year above us. Um, so I got a chance to play with those guys. And just growing up in New York, you're playing all kinds of music, you know. Yeah. I studied um, classical and, you know, pop and jazz and formally, you know, classically trained, went on to uh, Hart College of Music and then and then graduated from Purchase Conservatory uh, with a Bachelor of Music in Classical Piano. And then uh, years later, went back and did my master's there uh, in jazz. One of my professors was uh, the great John Faddis, who, was, right. you guys know, is, uh, was Dizzy Gillespie's protege, but uh, right. just kept it moving, worked with several celebrities, Melba Moore and uh, Astrid and Simpson. In fact, I did their last tour together um, on the West Coast and then just to continue before Nick passed and then continued to um, continue to work with Valerie Simpson as she was on her own since her husband died. Right. And uh, I know that since you've been here in Atlanta, uh, give us kind of your take on the scene here. I see that um, uh, Vaughn was having a problem connecting, so uh, we'll try keep trying him. But anyway, give us uh, your sense of what's going on here in Atlanta since you've been here. Well, you know, it was uh, it was really uh, amazing coming down here and meeting um, some of the great musicians that are down here. Um, one including yourself, Edwin, and mm -hmm. a bunch of the other players that that were down here. Um, uh, met a set of wonderful vocalists, uh, um, you know, some vibraphonists, uh, you know, bass players, drummers, and you know, it's a good, it's a good network of uh, musicians uh, down here. Musicians are, are really good. Um, the problem I I had coming from a place like you know New York is is just the venues weren't as as many, and and then when I got down here, some of them had, had <laughs> some of the jazz venues had closed. But you know, we still we still forge ahead, and we still get together, and people still have private events, private parties. So, you know, I forged ahead with that, and then working on some of your things that that I've had, and and uh, just creating your own sort of like uh, uh, entities for where to perform and where to play. You know, COVID, of course, this year didn't help that at all. It put a put a monkey wrench into all of that for everybody. But pre pre COVID situation, you know. Um, you know, you really had to go on and just, you know, make your own, uh, make your own street, so to speak, you know, meet people, right. and find clubs where you could play in and that sort of thing. But um, the people down here are absolutely wonderful. Musicians are, are really great. And I, I really love it. Yes. Now, Vaughn has chimed in on us and that's good that you got through. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. And Hey, Vaughn, uh, how are you? Hey, Vaughn, how are you doing today? Yes. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we were just uh, getting started here because I wasn't sure of the of the technical difficulty, but for the most part, we know we've been there before. You know, absolutely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we know. <laughs> so that <laughs> all right. But anyway, uh, Levi, um, uh, are you working on any projects right now? Are you thinking about doing anything? And what genre are you going to go in? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Yes, I'm actually working on some projects right now. Um, I'm in the writing and create, creating states of doing a, uh, a double CD um, project, which, you know, it's been in my spirit to do for the last, uh, I want to say probably a couple years now. I'm pulling the, 
uh, materials together. A lot of it will be original material. Some of it will be a few jazz standards. Um, and then it, it's going to be a, kind of an eclectic type of project where it's going to encompass, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but it's going to encompass sort of like, for lack of a better word, you know, all the things that I am, things that I've, I've done, you know, incorporating, you know, uh, the jazz, you know, my studies with uh, Walter Bishop Jr. and, and uh, you know, many greats and John Faddis and incorporating some of that and then some of my classical training. One of the pieces I'm, I'm going to actually uh, do will involve um, Monin. Okay. And, and then I'm going to go into a, uh, uh, a Chopin etude because they're both in F minor. And I'm going to go into a Chopin etude as a solo piano, and then it's going to be with the band, and then rotate back into uh, moaning. And it's it's something that I've been working on. Just just really just just slick. But no one's no one's going to know that when they first hear it. They're just going to think, oh, it's a jazz tune. You know, it's a standard. Uh, mm -hmm. We all know moaning. We love moaning. We, we may even like Levi's arrangement. Then they're going to hear this classical thing come out of left field. And right. I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to highlighting that. So it'll just be a, a combination of things. I'm going to have um, probably a, 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 a little hip hop on there um, for some of the groups that I've played with. Uh, may have a, a, a reggae tune because uh, I've played in reggae bands. I've played right. in pop bands, you know, jazz bands. So it's going to be uh, basically like uh, most, I want to say like all the, if not all the things I am, most of the things that I am and have yeah, experienced yeah. and just putting that together because I'm um, reminded that people respond even if they don't like a particular genre people respond to excellence and right. and that's what i'm really about you know just putting it all together that way well i'm glad you said that simply because um we had in other conversations of, of how uh the audience seemed to have been watered down when it came to a particular genre of music like let's say uh what they call contemporary jazz now or right. smooth jazz Right. which is, um, you know, it's, it's good in its own, you know. Right. But, you know, it's almost yeah. like the excellence for doing certain things is omitted. They do a lot of emulating. Right. Uh, but there is no, the creativity has kind of fallen to the wayside. And it's, and I think it's primarily because of um, what they feel the bigger audience is. And mm -hmm. a lot of them feel that the bigger audience is more rhythm and blues oriented versus a jazz right. or a classical, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vaughn here at Jazz Beats Radio, mm -hmm. uh, I know he'll have things to say about that because he plays all kinds of stuff on that radio station. So Vaughn, mm -hmm. you want to weigh in on this? Um I think that, 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 you know, just hearing about that the upcoming project you have, uh, Levi, I would be excited to hear that, you know, oh. um, the mixtures and the the fusion of those sounds together, right. and the elements that that uh, it conjures up in creativity alone. It's it right. sounds like it's going to be an awesome project, and uh, I'm I'm going to stand in line waiting to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. It's it's exciting to me because, you know, you know, you put a lot of times, you know being an artist and Edwin, you guys know this, you know, you, you put stuff out there, but before that you're like, it's kind of personal. It's like, you know, will people receive what I'm saying in the way that I want to receive it, that I want to give it. But, you know, you just take the leap and you put it out there. This is, this is, this is what I'm feeling. This is, this is what has come to me as an inspiration. And I want to share that and you put that out there. Mm -hmm. And I've known just from past, um, situations and past experience that when you do that even though you might not have it all 100 percent mapped out people will respond to the approach of the excellence and that's what you know edwin was saying a, a moment ago just doing it my my key is to not only not only uh put those fusions together that you mentioned but just to do it in the best possible way that i can do it that it's my best uh, and, and and i've seen in the past that people just they respond to excellence you know when i used to play at nordstrom and they used to run the whole music department. You know, I'd have the bands playing there and, and people, I, I'd have ladies come by, men come by. I didn't know that was jazz. You know, they, they're thinking, I, I, I don't even know what they were thinking. <laughs> I'm 
like saying, okay, you know, um, like what were you thinking? I'm thinking to myself, what were you thinking jazz was? Was it uh, Coltrane's Ascension album, which is very experimental and almost like Schoenberg and jazz? So, you know, people have all these different kind of, you know, they conjure what jazz is, but they don't really know, you know, until they right. they hear, a, you know, jazz is wide, just like classical is wide, just like hip hop is wide. You look at the, the roots of where hip hop hip hip hop came from to where it is now it's wide it's huge it's so many doors and avenues you can't just pigeonhole it you know so mm -hmm. it's just interesting to, to to be able to put all that together right and to capture an audience that can understand that is another that's uh, that's a pretty much i found to be a difficult thing to do you right. know because they tend to um uh be pretty much set on what they can understand. And that's one thing I learned about the recording. You have to put an element <clears throat> without going over their head uh, with the music. The the worst thing I think you could do is play stuff that they they cannot really Relate understand to. where you're going, the re yeah. relationship to that and what they're accustomed to hearing, what they were brought up. But there are people who are willing to, you know, try things, you know, which is a good right. thing, you know. And they'll get into it, but they a lot of them don't ask questions. But if they did, like for instance, if the musician performing would explain a lot of things to an audience, it will help a lot, you know, in setting, right. you know, uh, precedent for a type of music they are not accustomed to. Right. And uh, but uh, Vaughn, anything else you you need to add on this? Oh yeah, I was just uh, going to uh, chime in about Levi having to explain to the lady. Well, she was shocked that she found out that that was jazz and she had no idea. But that that just goes to show you what happens when we put titles on the music. Because they get to the point where it's like a, um, a doctrination into what this sounds like. And it right. limits it limits the expansion of what the music really is. Right. It puts it in a box, right. you know. And so many sounds come out of the, 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 the history of this cultural phenomenon. We call it jazz, right. unfortunately, but it's, 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 you can't contain it. The universe right. won't allow it. You know, right. the creativity of the musician refuses to be boxed in. Right. And so when you, when, when, when it, it, just, it just chimed into the, these thoughts in my head about what we've done to the music and putting it in a and encasing it in one little area, it's 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 almost you know sacrilegious, you know? Right. It just exactly. it becomes um I happened to be on a, a Facebook one day and I was, you know, there's a several groups, people who always have these little groups and 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 music clubs and things like this. And and it was so funny. Um somebody was asking about you know, a vocalist, uh, I'll throw out a name like Will Downing or, you know, somebody like, a, uh, you know, comparison to him to um, uh, like uh, 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 Kirk Elling. Is, right. They said, is that smooth jazz and all this kind of stuff? And the comments were just laughable because right. they could not describe what, what the term smooth jazz is. Right. It was hilarious to me. Right. And I said, we have messed our people up so bad <laughs> <laughs> right. with these. Right. And it's not us. Don't, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, we right. know who controls the recording industry, right? Right, right. So it's not us that's doing it. It's just the process that they want to, 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 to box it in. Right. And I think, like Edwin was just saying, if we were able to explain what it is from a musician's perspective or those of us who are like musicologists or big fans of the music or trendsetters of the music, right? it would help them out a whole lot, you know? Right. And so uh, <laughs> I think, what you, you, you know, those processes have to happen. And as this platform, this is, the, this is the message that we would like to do with Yes Jazz Matters, of course, to be able to re-educate, right. to re-enhance the, 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 uh, the process and the and the edge and the and the whole knowledge about what this music is and where it's come from and you know uh how it has evolved over the last hundred years you know right and take off those blinders please right, <laughs> right. that's where exactly. we're at today yeah exactly. 
No, you're absolutely right, man. It's, it's it, putting it in a box is sort of, you know, it's sort of it's good for the record company because they they want to put things in a box and have people, you know, identify. Oh, I'm buying this. I'm buying country. I'm, I'm going to the jazz section. I'm buying this. I'm buying Michael Jackson. You know, pop. And, you know, it it helps them in that regards. But you know, Duke Ellington said it best. There's only two kinds of music: good music and bad. Music. Music. That's the bottom line. Of it. Yeah, we can put absolutely. all the labels on it that we want to, but then you know, you know, music is is there's no real boundaries. It, it the limits become stretched. I mean, the 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 walls just become stretched because okay, you may do something, Edwin may play something, and I'm like, hey man, you know, he did a nice riff on that last recording. I'm gonna experiment with this, and then and then I come up with something totally different than. He hears and comes up with now the box has been opened mm -hmm. to something different that didn't precede, but yet it birthed out of what we were doing, out of the communication of which is what jazz is. It is communication on the spur of the moment. I hear what you did, I'm doing this, you hear that, you do that, drummer hears that, he does that. It becomes this wonderful snowflake that's yeah, you know absolutely. snowflake is no same snowflake it's the same thing you know <laughs> <laughs> what do you think edward <laughs> well, i think that uh, uh as a matter of fact vaughn says it all the time jazz ain't nothing but soul there you go <laughs> and, that's and, right. and that's the bottom line you know what i'm saying that's exactly yeah, that's what it is yeah and if uh like you know, Levi, during our summer series, we normally have an outdoor concert and right. thing, and, and you've done a, a few of them. Uh, my whole thing with Jazz Matter is, is to keep expanding that as far as what the, uh, the public is, really wants, because you, since you can't really uh, play one thing all night long in a situation right. like that, it's mm -hmm. always good to expand. So my thing was to get... Um, some people that was that I could blend both opera and jazz together, mm -hmm. and I do know s some opera singers right. that would really like to do that project. As a matter of fact, we talked about it, and I've I've done a uh, uh, I think it was two of them uh, a few years back, right? And uh, it it works, you know. It gives a, it's a different dynamic to uh, to a concert. Right. Uh, it's a it's a listener's type of concert. You know, you uh -huh. go there to pay attention. You don't go there to stay on your phone and right. and, and just do a lot of chit chat. You're really right. there to get into what they're doing because it's kind of unique to blend the two. And we don't hear enough of that. That's the other thing. Right. And, and when you were telling me about your project, you know, I was like glad to hear that, you know, come out, you know, where you're going to move from a jazz tune and a very popular jazz tune into the classical. Right. And then back into the jazz and everything. That is really uh, something I know that you know people really want to want to be able to say, yeah, I, I, I can understand that. You right. know what I'm saying? And right. But we have to give it to them. Right. And, and the thing is, since uh, we have a we're living in a virtual world right now. Right. Uh, jazz Matters is definitely trying to put together those things on right. virtual in a virtual situation. To right. where we can actually put that out there, concert-wise, you know, for different innovators to come and do things, you know, that right. is not normal. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, what I mean not normal is the fact that it's not done consistently. Right. You know, with and with, it's not with, predictable. Yeah, it's not predictable. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so, where are you going? Uh, some of the people that you had worked with in the past, uh, are you still? In communication with them? Yes, I, I'm in communication with them. Um, it's been a minute since COVID, you know, kicked in. It's been, you know, quiet on a quiet side. Um, some of the uh, musicians out of New York, you know, unfortunately with COVID, you know, a lot of my buddies that work Broadway, musical directors, conductors, that's all shut down. It's the right. ghost town in that regard, just because of the, the COVID situation. So it's been a little bit of a, of a draw um, people are trying to reinvent, okay, so how do I emerge from this uh, situation that we have, you know, because people are not going to stop playing, they're not going to stop singing, they're not going to stop dancing. It's just that we don't get to see it on the same platform that we're used to seeing it, where we can go to a venue and have 
you know, three, four, a thousand people, 1500 seating venue and, you know, wow them and come off the stage and that sort of thing. So that's, that's not where it is, but I've been keeping my ear to the pavement as to <clears throat> what are people doing? What are artists doing? And, you know, I, I was talking to a bass player um, a little while ago um, and he was saying that Garth Brooks did something that was interesting and I, and I want to follow up with that and see, you know, what the, what the reports was. But basically, long story short, what he did was he, um, this was uh, towards the end of the summer, he um, booked out, I guess his, his label, booked out drive-in movie theaters, old drive-in movie theaters, and put up um, a, a big mega screen, had admission for the people to drive in, they promoted it, and he did this around the country. It was all gonna stream in simultaneously. So they paid a fee to get in, just like you would a drive-in movie theater, but it wasn't a movie theater, it was Garth Brooks in concert. And apparently it was very successful. So that was just one avenue. And I thought to myself, said, hmm, you know, that's interesting. You know, that was one way that he got around the COVID performance situation, still got paid. So I thought that was very interesting. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, just looking and keeping my eyes open and seeing what other, you know, artists, of course, they have the capital to, to pull off something like that. Um, and just seeing, you know, what are they doing? Uh, what's going on? What's happening? What are people, how are people being creative, you know, uh, innovating the situation with performing. I know a lot of people are doing the, you know, individual recording in their own space and then putting that out there. But I thought that was innovative. I thought that was very creative. Well, you know, um, we're running out of time. And it's funny you should mention that because Jazz Matters was actually thinking of that way back in the spring. When, when it first happened, uh, we, we really started talking about doing just that. And then, uh, uh, I talked to some people that had actually already made that journey, you know, to doing mm -hmm. the um, theaters out like that. And then I heard about golf a little later uh, right. in the summer. But yeah, it was already on my mind. Let's say it like that. <laughs> you know, I, it, I, you know, it was definitely already on my mind. So uh, our time is 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 out, and um, I don't uh, want us to get cut off too soon, but. Levi, uh, give us some information on how people can contact you or contact you in a way to get your music or just do a chat or whatever. You got yeah, they can. Um, yeah, they can. Uh, they can send me an email. Um, I'm having my um, website revamped at this point. Um, I'm doing something new, but uh, they can send me an email at levi eight eight k e y s at gmail dot com. It's l e v i eight eight k e y s at gmail.com and I'll respond and as soon as I um you know redo the my website I'll be putting that out there. They can also see a lot of my work on YouTube. Just put in my whole name, Levi Barku, L E V I B A R C O U R T, and just put me into YouTube. I've got tons of videos right there that'll give you a good teaser, you know. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And uh Vaughn, uh let them know where they can catch you. Uh catch me at the um uh... Jazz Beats Radio uh, webpage, jazzbeatsradio.com, and just uh, click on the, uh, the highlight where it says personalities, and you'll see where I came from in order and where I've gotten to today in, in this music. And so uh, also I can be reached at Instagram at Von Coulter, and uh, my new Twitter page is Ain't Nothing But Soul. Uh, uh, ain't nothing, well, nothing but soul, one. <laughs> nothing but soul, one. Okay. And uh, you can always get us at yesjazzmatters.org and go through there and see everything you need to know about Jazz Matters, what we're doing. And we also have a donate page, so make sure you uh, donate. And we're going to uh, basically wrap this one up. But Levi, we'll, we'll definitely do another interview again, and we'll probably get it to where people will be able to see you uh, in a virtual situation. Absolutely. Uh, and, I look forward uh, to it. Right. So thanks a lot guys and um we're out of here this is jazz matters and you can get us at yesjazzmatters.org thanks man thanks Vaughn. thanks edwin thank you big right. good, good to see you man, man. All, right, all right great thank you all right bye now